Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Paul Stephen here, and today I'm bringing out some video. In this video, I'm going to be starting a new series where I re uh, react to every single FNAF game theory, or I rewatch them. Let's not waste any time. Let's just get straight into it. <laughs> I love his. I love his fake reaction. What do you mean was? You're looking directly at it. That's 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 where the um that's where the, uh, the fan hating the fan uh, that's why it started. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. This part is amazing. Really compelling gameplay. Oh my gosh, guys. Th this is the best thing oh, in the now. entire <laughs> kind of series, Freddy, I guess. Don't get me, Freddy. I mean, it's not really a series, but like all of the FNAF this theories, this is the best. Yep. Just a little bit. Apparently, one of them bit someone back in '87, presumably 1987. When the past guard leaves you recorded phone messages to act as your tutorial, that is as much as he could record before he got himself killed. And that's it. Stay five nights, collect your paycheck, done. Game over. Play something new. But playing at that is doing the game a huge disservice because that's not even scratching the surface. Matt, you have no idea how little that is of the of the lore. Mm -hmm. Posters on the wall will change randomly. That news clippings appear and disappear, telling the dark secrets of this twisted place. Putting it all together, here's the rest of the story. In addition to the core four robots, Chica, Bonnie, Freddy, and Foxy, there's also a fifth, unofficially referred to as Golden Freddy. Ignoring the rules of physics, Golden Back then he was just Yellow Bear, but people called him Golden Freddy, and then it was canon afterwards. Right. So that's the gist of it. Murder, missing children, foul loaders. Killer robots and pizza. Who is your character? How's he fit in? Why does he stay for five nights when he's very clearly confronting the possibility of death? Well, he's the son of the guy that murdered all of those children. <laughs> that's that's it. That's pretty much the gist. What more can we know about this terrifying Golden Freddy? And most importantly, what is the Golden Freddy is our protagonist, uh, his brother. Later, he establishes that Sylvia is, like, the Susie stand-in, I think, right? Or she represents Chica. And that's interesting because Sylvia was the first to die. Like, like he says, I'm, I'm not trying to make light of it or, like, make jokes about it. But, I mean, like, she was the first, right? And in the Missing Children's Incident, um, we're told that Chica's first. I feel like that's kind of interesting. Proceeded to grab her bag, filling it with $1,600 in cash, arcade tokens, and keychains. Spurred on Why? Because I have a strong suspicion that this story is the one that inspired Five Nights at Freddy's. I feel like it still may have been. I don't think that there's any doubt that Freddy's. But I'm not, I'm, I mean, not for sure. In 1991, who was raised to 425. And that logic I don't really understand. Because, how is it 425 and then you get $4 an hour in 1993? That doesn't make much sense. I've, that's always, I've always questioned that, but okay, whatever. It's nearly factual at this point that 
FNAF 1 is in 1993, but still, I just find that a little bit weird. Saying that the children's bodies were stuffed in the various suits. Mm -hmm. This appears to be true. Of course. Chica both have bones asking for access. As though someone's trying to cling to the last threads of their lives stuffed inside the costumes. I, I like that um, he actually put them in the correct arrangement that they that he thinks they should be in before he even tells us. Why is that guy so limp and lifeless? So unlike the others. It's weird. I, I talked about this in my new in my video on the new kid. Uh, I think it's actually just because the spirits don't know how to stand up. Some people say Gabriel is a girl. No. You, Mike Schmidt, are the murderer. No, your dad is actually. You are the killer. I find this. I still find this theory to be really interesting, even though it's literally impossible now. But but that is kind of the the premise of FNAF 4 and Ultimate Custom Night, so. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Sweet dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, on to the next one. Uh, hello? Hello, hello? Oh, this hello, is funny. <laughs> more cameras, more danger, and more bad. But that also kind of more questions. Ugh. Like hardcore. Let's get the big one out of That would explain why the old models reappear in Five Nights One and the toy models don't. And how it mentions a smaller version of the restaurant. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Some people still don't believe that the that the Withers are the classic animatronics, um, but before FNAF one, I mean, I think that's kind of obvious by now. But some people still don't believe it, guys. If you don't believe that yet, I don't know what to tell you. Not impossible, but hard. I thought it was a prequel sequel. This is more complicated than anything. I, I mean, it doesn't, but good, good try. <laughs> I mean, it that is the puppet, but the tear tracks is kind of not amazing evidence. Charlie here, um, the puppet spirit here is a boy, meaning that it it's possible that the retcon Scott made, um, that was Charlie being girl. It's po that's possible. Golden Bonnie suit. Or Spring Bonnie, but whatever, that's not the point. Spring Bonnie killer. <laughs> if it was why the hell is purple guy bringing his phone with him like what's he gonna do with that while he's while he's destroying the animatronics what's the point on to the next one <laughs> Matt pad in the closet. <laughs> it's time. <laughs>
out three months after the first. The trailer for the third was two months later, and like four minutes after that, the game was available to download. <laughs> so forgive me if I was caught with my pants down on that one. I just wasn't prepared for it. But even more impressive than that abbreviated timeline was your ability to rip that final game apart. Hours after the release of the game, people were discussing good versus bad endings, 8-bit Atari cake, glitching through walls, and punching a flipping code into cement bricks arranged like a telephone dial pad. In regards to that last one, I have two things to say. First off, well done to you guys for figuring it out so quickly. And Seriously, how do people think of that? First of all, first of all, they never sold it. They existed simultane simultaneously, and second of all, it was something else that caused Fred Bears to close. In which an hours, yeah, in the finger. That's where the frontal lobe is. How about they just don't walk at all? Why do they let them walk at all, even at night? Come on, man. When the hell was that happen said? Two em two employees died in in each of the suits. That, that was never stated ever. And even Mikey leads you there, knowing that purple guy attacking you will eventually free you. No, actually, Shadow Freddy at this point in the timeline is evil as evident by the fact that Henry in FNAF 6 refers to him as a trap. He's the one hiding them in the animatronic suits. Not no, he's not. Like we've been assuming. But then what about the fifth child? Yes, it is the killer, actually. Well, don't worry. I'll come back. I always do. In the meantime, it's all just a theory. <laughs> Matt Puppet. <laughs> Matt Puppet. Just a theory. A, a game theory. theory. Thanks for watching. Why does he have that band-aid on? <laughs> no, they aren't. I mean, everybody has a birthday there, so. I mean, sorry. At Freddy's, birthday parties are pretty damn common, so I don't think that's the greatest evidence in the world. You're right about that, but for the wrong reasons. Yes, it is. <laughs> Why'd you show up Foxy there when Mangle is Foxy? Oh god, not this theory. <laughs> It still has the safe room, but my, all of the locations have the safe room, but William just opened it up. <laughs> it's as simple as that. No. I mean, duh. Yeah, but the the withered animatronics don't have those same designs, meaning they can't be the same. They can't be the animatronics any time before the FNAF one location. But it's not a flash forward to the game's next location. 
yes, it is. It literally has to be. <laughs> What is happening? They are able to scare purple. <laughs> what the hell is this? Purple guy into the golden bonnie spring lock suit, talking it over with anyone who would stand to listen to me ramble on and on about fictional haunted robots. And just looking at it from every possible angle, all logic points to it being... Not the purple guy. I mean, what did I just say? Not the phone guy. No, he he does not. <laughs> My knee, you're here right now. <laughs> but we already established that that's not a phone. He's the only person in the game who knows about the safe rooms. As we've mentioned before, all the safe rooms were No. No. He's the only one mentioned to know about the safe rooms. <laughs> It's not that it doesn't make sense. Well, it is, but the main problem is that it's literally impossible because <laughs> Purple Guy destroys the animatronics, but so how can they attack you in FNAF 1? They can't. The lights are still on in these animatronics. They're still yeah, but they're broken, <laughs> so they can't do anything. <laughs> Well, rides in a suit, and despite getting sprung trapped, actually does hold out until sprung trapped. No hat, no movie, no fourth installment. Oh, my gosh! Oh, my gosh, what happened? What's wrong? <laughs> but hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. Hey. Alright. Well, that was part one of rewatching every FNAF game theory. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on the video, and I will. If uh, you guys enjoyed this video, then I'll definitely do more. I'll react to the rest, I guess. But yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Impulsive and out. Peace.